Hi folks, this is Checkpoint Quiz 1.1. We're given two points P and Q, and in part A, we're asked to plot the two points. So we'll go off to our Cartesian coordinate plane, the y-axis and the x-axis. The point P has coordinates 2, comma, negative 3. That means from the origin, we move on the x-axis to the right two units, and we move down three units, the y. On the y-axis, and there's our point, p to negative three. The point q has coordinates negative five, negative one. So we start at the origin, move to the left five units, and then move down one unit. And there's the point Q, negative five, negative one. So that's it for part A. Now for part B, we're asked to determine the quadrants in which P and Q lie. Remember the quadrants are labeled counterclockwise with Roman numerals. This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. So we see that Q lies in quadrant 3, and P lies in quadrant 4. Next, we're asked to find the distance between P and Q. So by the distance between P and Q, we mean we want the length of the straight line segment that connects P with Q. We have the so-called distance formula. If we're given a point P, X1, Y1, and another point Q, X2, Y2, the distance between these points can be found by taking the difference of the X's, X2 minus X1, square them, plus the difference in the Y's, Y2, Y minus Y1, square it, add them up, and then take the square root. So in our case, the point P, the first point is 2, negative 3, and the second point Q is negative 5, negative 1. So we can think of X1, the x-coordinate of the first point, being 2. Y1, the y-coordinate of the first point, is negative 3. Negative 5 is the x-coordinate of the second point, so that's X2 and negative 1 is the y-coordinate of the second point, y2. So as we say, we plug and chug. x2 minus x1, negative 5 minus 2, square that. y2 minus y1, negative 1 minus negative 3, square that. Add them together and take the square root. So negative 5 minus 2 gives us a negative 7. Negative 1 minus a negative 3 is the same as negative 1 plus 3, which is a positive 2. Negative 7 squared is 49. 2 squared is 4. So for our grand and final answer, we get d is the square root of 53. So that then finds the distance between p and q. Part d, we're asked to find the midpoint of the line segment that connects p and q. And so we think back, we know that if we have two generic points, p and q, The midpoint of the line segment which connects them has coordinates halfway over, halfway up. In other words, we average the x values, so we add the x's together, divide by 2, and then we average the y values, we add them together, and divide by 2. So our point P is 2, negative 3. Our point Q is negative 5, negative 1, and so we can make the identification as before. And 
And so we get our midpoint is average the x values, 2 plus negative 5 divided by 2, average the y values, negative 3 plus negative 1 divided by 2, and when we simplify, we get negative 3 over 2, or negative 3 halves, negative 4 over 2, negative 2. And something that you're, you can do in the privacy of your own home is to go back to your plot of P and Q, draw the line segment that connects them, like we did in part C, and see if the midpoint, see if these coordinates really do describe the midpoint. So that'll do it for part D. Now in part E, we're asked to find points which are symmetric to P about the x-axis, y-axis, and origin. So let's go ahead and sketch the plane again, and we'll graph the point P. So 2, negative 3. If we want to plot the point symmetric to P about the x-axis, we need to find the reflection of P across the x-axis. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I would go directly up to the x-axis, and then I would want something as far away on this side of the x-axis as P is on this side. So, since I'm three units away from here, I need to go three units up. And so the point symmetric here would be 2 comma 3. And so as we see the reflection across the x-axis, the x-coordinates are the same, the y-coordinates are opposite. Now we want to reflect P across the y-axis. So the point has to be on the directly opposite P, but over in this direction. Since we traveled two units to get to here, we need to go back two units. And the point then symmetric about the y-axis, oops, it's not p, it's a reflection, would be negative two, negative three. And so once again, the reflection of a point across the y-axis, you keep the y-values the same, and you take the opposite of the x-value. Last but not least, we need the origin. How do we reflect something through the origin? Well, you can think of origin, reflecting through the origin, as reflecting across the, uh, the y-axis and then reflecting across the x-axis, or vice versa, reflecting across the x-axis, then reflecting across the y-axis. No matter which procedure you choose, You're going to end up here at the point negative 2, 3. So to reflect something through the origin, you take the opposite of both the x value and the y value. So that'll do it for number one.